Hello everybody and thank you for joining me. This is Sierra from Sierra T Designs and today we have the first of my cards, the Christmas in July series. So let's jump in. So I'm going to create a slimline card and I like to create my base first. So I take a full piece of cardstock here, the eight and a half by 11, and I cut off four inches because that gives me a seven by eight and a half inch piece of cardstock. I'm also going to cut down some hammer mill cardstock because I want to run it through my die cutting machine. So I figured I'd tie cut that down from a full sheet here and just to make it a little easier and I'm going to mess that up in a little bit anyway but that's okay and then for my base I like to score it at the three and a half inch mark so I end up with an eight and a half by three and a half inch base that is my preferred size for slimline cards there's no wrong way to make them I know some people make them about a quarter of an inch bigger than this this is just kind of the direction I go with them but whatever works for you and then I am going to bring in the Waffle Flower Slim Lacy Layers dies. And I have the Lacy Layer here. And I, I sent it through my switch. But I, uh, I pushed the switch button so that it come back out the front. And it hadn't quite cut the whole way through. So you can hear, you see me here just trying to realign that die so that I can have it cut that bottom edge because it didn't quite cut. I just, I pushed my switch button a little too soon and it didn't quite cut the end. Also, these are slimline plates, right? So they're kind of long, and my magic mat is not really made for die cutting that long. So I also think that another issue I had, uh, other than the fact that I pushed the switch button a little too early, was that it uh, didn't have enough pressure to actually cut through. So I did run it through again here, and you can see I just cut that end and it looked really good. And then I'm gonna make the same mistake with the next piece because apparently I don't learn the first time I make a mistake. <laughs> so I'm gonna end up doing this again. You can see that it's just a touch too long for that magic mat. There are bigger magic mats. I just don't own them. I own the small versions just because as a general rule, that works perfectly fine for me. But you can see there that I didn't cut the bottom so I'm just going to flip it around, put it back through. I went through about halfway, pushed the switch button, and it came back out the front. So then it was super easy to just come out the way that it had already gone in. Um, but yeah, I don't apparently always learn from the first time I do stuff. But not a big deal. Easy fix. Uh, and then I'm going to bring in three Distress Oxide inks. I have Salvage Patina seedless preserves and speckled egg and that's honestly just because they're colors that I really enjoy you could easily recreate this card with any colors you enjoy if you wanted to do like a monotone look you could do it in like three blues or three purples or three greens whatever you want to do um, this is just because I like vibrant colors so I don't do tend towards them um, and I'm sorry the camera shakes a bit when I'm doing this it uh, if I speed up my footage it's really noticeable I just I use my phone to record and it's attached to my desk so it does kind of jiggle around a little bit. I'm sorry for that. Um, and yeah, I just kind of blended the colors in a way that I felt kind of hopefully was going to make mimic some movement. So it's kind of what I'm trying for here. Um, mostly with salvage patina being the main color, quite a big stripe of it through the center. And then kind of adding speckled egg and seedless preserves around the salvage patina. There's no rhyme or reason for this. You could easily do a different pattern. You could, you know, bring in a stencil and do something completely different if you wanted to. This was honestly just because I was kind of trying to mimic um, like air moving and then doing it in colors that I really enjoy and then I do go back through the colors just to kind of get them to blend a little bit better together um, my speckled egg is very wet like it, it's a newer color as a salvage patina mind you um, but it's so it it kind of wants to eat the other inks so I ended up having to kind of blend through my other colors again and I also I like to work through my colors twice anyway I find you generally get a better blend um, this is a little difficult to blend because I kind of have them just haphazard in different areas as well so it's not really intentionally supposed to be nicely blended they were kind of just colors that I chose because I like the look of them but I was having some fun with these colors. So that's the colors that I chose. And then once my background was completely dry, I decided to white and heat my white heat emboss my sentiment. And I have a sentiment here from Simon's stamp. It is the joy to you and yours um, stamp set that this came from. And it's just a really pretty kind of vintage looking font and style. And I thought it was really fun. It came out, I believe, in the um, January or December card kit last year. 
And I'm kind of just getting a chance to use it now because, of course, I'm going to do my Christmas in July. So I get to kind of work with some products that got to me a little bit late. So I wasn't really able to use them for the Christmas season last year. So that's always kind of a fun thing about Christmas in July. I get to bust out supplies that maybe came to me a bit later than Christmas um, from last year. So I get to kind of use them. So that's a really fun part of this series. Uh, So yeah, I white heat emboss that. I'm going to melt it here until it's smooth and melted. Um, You could not white heat emboss. I I pondered seriously heat embossing in a color. Um, But in the end, I decided that because the background, like the card base is white and the um, kind of deckled edge or the scalloped edge of the panel that goes below this is white. I chose to go white to kind of tie the colors together. Um, You don't have to do that. You could absolutely do a color. I did consider it pretty seriously, but in the end I chose to go white. And then I brought in a piece of low tack tape here just to cover the sentiment because I didn't want this um, embossing, or it's not embossing, sorry, this paste to go over top of my sentiment. Um, I do already have pixie spray on this stencil and this is a stencil from Simon Says Stamp as well. Everything I use is always linked and listed down below. If you're ever curious about it, you can always check out the details. It's always linked and listed down below. Uh, And I did bring in some of the snowfall paste from Tim Holtz. Uh, This came out, I believe it comes out around Christmas and it is a grit paste that has some of his rock candy glitter in it, Um, but it's not super shiny glitter. It kind of gives you a different texture. Um, It's really neat. If you like pastes, it's pretty neat. Uh, But I did choose to add more glitter because if you've been with me for a hot minute, you know how much I love sparkle. I love shiny things. I love glitter. So I do end up adding some, but you wouldn't need to at this stage if you didn't want to. Um, This is just something I like to do. And I did just kind of put it all over the whole front of this. And the fun thing about this grit paste is once it's dry, it's actually little more difficult to see the snowflakes so you kind of get this pop of really cool snowflakes against this colored background and this is where I decided to add a little more glitter so I did bring in my little Nuvo spoon and then I brought in the rock candy glitter which is this kind of fine glitter here and then I'm also going to bring in some mica flakes and yes you see me pick a piece of hair out of um, the paste there I I do have five cats so you know it is always a bit of a a fight to keep hair out of my projects but usually I win but every once in a while I kind of have a problem with that and then here is the mica flakes and I'm just kind of and adding them to the centers of the snowflakes. And then I, you will see me kind of push them in a little bit. This is to get them to stay on the card. The paste isn't dry at this point, so obviously it's easy for me to kind of add them and then just press them in. And then I do tap off any of the excess and then put them back in the jar. You can see that right here just with a piece of paper. But I think a fair amount of did stick to it, so it kind of looked really neat. And then this is where I get to remove that piece of low tech tape that's kind of just protecting my sentiment. I really didn't want the snowflakes to be in the sentiment. I wanted them to kind of, uh, the sentiment to kind of stand on its own because it is quite eye-catching against the background and I love how that looks. So I kind of did separate that out so that there was no snowflakes. You could have the snowflake go over the edge if you wanted to. This is just kind of how I decided I wanted to do it. And then I brought in my Nouveau Deluxe glue and I'm just going to adhere my layers together. Now you can see that my... A colored panel is a little bit warped so I did just set my misty on top of it my paste is almost really dry at this point uh, so I stuck my pa- my uh, misty on top of it so that I could have it adhere flat while it was adhering and I'm going to do it at this stage as well when I go and adhere it down to the base just to make sure that it stayed flat um, you probably don't need it at this point because that uh, doing it on the first run with the panels was kind of pretty much enough that was needed but this also helps the glue just to adhere where I want it to so it's just kind of a fun way to make sure that's going to stay where you want it to and then for a little bit of added shimmer and shine because I don't think there's ever enough I did bring in some of my perfect pearls that I just keep mixed up on in a little mini mister bottle on my desk and I just kind of splashed that across the whole background even across the sentiment just to tie everything in together a little bit more and it kind of creates the look of stars or snowflakes in the background so that's pretty cool so I'm gonna hold it up here so you can enjoy it in all its glory it's super sparkly super pretty loads of fun I am in love with it I would love to know what you guys think of it I think it turned out really pretty and I think it's a fun 
first card in this series, though it is a non-traditional color palette. Uh, I still am crazy in love with it. So I would love to know what you guys think. Leave me a like, leave me a comment and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do new videos every Monday and Thursday and I will have lots more Christmas and July cards coming. So thank you so much for stopping by and I will see you guys again very soon. Bye-bye for now.